What a crowd. Wow. Wow. Woohoo! <laughs> so let's get started. What's your favorite movie? Men in Black. But you knew that, right, Sarah? <laughs> this seems a little rehearsed, right? <laughs> yeah. We will never come unprepared for you guys. So do you remember the scene with the girl? You know, the little girl? It's epic. Let's watch it. This is from YouTube, not Pirate Bay. <laughs> Let's watch it. Edward, what the hell happened? Hesitated. May I ask why you felt little Tiffany deserved to die? Well, she was the only one that actually seemed dangerous at the time, sir. How'd you come to that conclusion? Well, first I was going to pop this guy hanging from the street light, and then I realized, you know, he's just working out. And how would I feel somebody come running in the gym, bust me in my ass while I'm on a treadmill? Then I saw this uh, snarling beast guy, and I noticed he had a tissue in his hand. I realized, you know, he's not snarling. He's sneezing. You know, ain't no real threat there. Then I saw a little Tiffany. I'm thinking, you know, eight-year-old white girl, middle of the ghetto, bunch of monsters, this time of night with quantum physics books. She about to start some shit, Zed. She's about eight years old. Those books are way too advanced for her. If you ask me, I say she's up to something. And to be honest, I'd appreciate it if you eased up off my back about it. Or do I owe her an apology? I told you it was epic. And that actually reminds us of how we look at ourselves. We are the analytical Will Smith that go for the ones that others overlook. Except for the part where he asks, or do I owe her an apology? Except from that part. <laughs> this is... All right, we are back in minds. We use science, technology, and intuition to find the founders that others miss. And um, we actually think that if you want to be able to zoom in at the perfect spot, you need to zoom out to get the full picture. So we use other people's uh, myths and traps to find great companies. So let's zoom out and have a look at our industry, the VC industry. VC. Society is changing, but VC is not. We have the same deal structures, management fees, titles um, as we have had for so long. Did you know that the 80-20 carried structure um, system actually origins from medieval times? And isn't it a bit ironic that the whole industry is based on disruption but finds it a little bit too hard for its own work. I do have some problems with the clicker. Do you see that? <laughs> like, yeah. Come on. Yeah, here we go. Myth one. Yeah, let's talk about some myths in our industry. Let's like dissect them. So myth one, there are no female founders to be found, and especially not in tech. And if there were any, VC would surely invest in them, right? It's true. But as a matter of fact, 30% of the founders are female. And it's true that you very often hear investors say that they would invest in found female founders if there were any. So we took a look at the unicorn founders, because the unicorns have raised most of the venture capital. And we found out that out of the world's unicorn founders, a majority don't even have a back tech background. This means the criteria doesn't even exist on the checklist when evaluating male founders. All right, so there are no men in tech either. <laughs> exactly. Next myth, age. The ideal founder, it's, yeah, you know, who generates maximum return is around 28 years old fast learner, great stamina, puts all their time into their venture, right? Everyone is nodding. Everyone agrees, right? No, as a matter of fact, 
If you look at the fastest growing new ventures, the average age of the founder is 45. This is Anne. She's the founder of Dynamic Code, a fast-growing health tech company. She was told that she should bring on a male co-founder when raising money. She was also told that she couldn't run a tech company because she was too old. Today, she is transforming healthcare by providing a diagnosis to consumers without them even having to leave their homes, like STDs, tonsillitis, gluten intolerance, you name it. And we are super happy to be part of her journey. She's awesome. Dynamic Code is the company. Myth number two, myth number three. three. Um, I mean, immigrants very often become Uber drivers, and when they start businesses, it's very often low scale, like kebab dry places. cleaners and kebab places. Actually, 16% of the companies are founded by immigrants. Uh, if you look at the Fortune 500 companies in the US, 55% of them are founded by immigrants. Uh, entrepreneurs with immigrant background has much harder time to raise capital and get loans. And people with African heritage have the absolute toughest time. Look at this team. They look amazing, don't they? And they are. But as a matter of fact, they met so much cognitive bias when they were looking for funding. They contacted more than 120 different investors and didn't get one meeting. Since we invested in Transfer Galaxy, they've sent more than 40 million euros through their platform in, in less one year. than one year. Crazy. Have you heard about pattern recognition? VC is all about that. Um, our industry, we, we want to make sure that we go for the founders with the right background, the right schools, the right experience, maybe at Spotify or other other places. Um, but as a matter of fact, it's a huge advantage to have the wrong background, to be an outsider. If you have the wrong background, you don't know what toes you cannot step on or what rules you cannot break. You see disruption more clearly. And uh, that's why we love outsiders. And we didn't have the right background either, you and Hallelujah. me. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we definitely didn't have the right background, and so didn't Per and Adam, who started Virkesbussen. They were, just had a wrong background to enter the timber industry, and they also, the timber industry didn't make sense to the VC world either. But that left, left us a space, and what we did was that we looked at all industries yet to be digitized, and we found the in timber industry, which is huge, in the, especially in the Nordics, but also in other parts of the world. And they're actually already gained a prominent position with their digital marketplace for timber using AI to optimize the cells. And we got a new hashtag, Forest Tech. Forest Tech. We yeah. We love new has hashtags. Yeah, exactly. For Forest Tech, I yeah, think it's also, ours too. Right? Yeah. And uh, this is a myth that all our portfolio companies have met. There are no good companies outside of the big cities, like Stockholm, like Berlin, Silicon Valley, Helsinki, or... But there are. 74% of the companies started in Sweden are started outside of Stockholm. And for Finland, that figure is actually 88%. So what does research say? I mean, uh, does this like, correlate with reality, or is it just myths out of the blue? Uh, a research team uh, looked at VC firms and how they evaluated entrepreneurs and founders, both men and women. And this is how they constantly describe the female founders. They are too risk avert, they are hesitant to grow their companies, and their companies underperform. The most interesting part was that even if they had the same, exact same information, the conclusions were totally different depending on whether it was a female or a male founder. I mean, age, it's a number, right? But if the, male, if the founder was young, the male founder was promising, and the female founder was inexperienced. If the founder spent a lot of money, 
He was driven to build his company, and she was only wasteful. What was the results? How did the companies perform? So this research team, they looked at 24 different KPIs during five years. And do you know what they found out? Can you guess? There were no statistical differences whatsoever on the performance of the male and the female companies. So cognitive bias is actually a shortcut in our brain, and it was once crucial for our survival. Today, it prevents us from making the right decisions. There is a huge potential there. And that's why we actually founded Back in Minds in the first place. Not to miss out. So who gets funding in Sweden? Uh, and in the world <laughs> of investments. Um, we looked for statistics on this, but there were hardly no statistics. So we created our own database. We looked at all share remittances in Sweden during one year, and this is what we found out. So we started with looking at all the investments that went to Stockholm-based companies, and then the investment that went to the rest of the country. And we saw that only 8% of the venture capital went to the 74% of the companies outside of Stockholm. You see the same trend in Finland. Uh, only 12% <laughs> um, goes to the rest of Finland. And uh, in, in the States, you have three states that get 80% of all the investments. And then we looked at the amount of money who went to companies founded by one men, companies founded by women and men, and companies founded by women only. And this is what we found out. 96% of the capital went to companies founded by men. 4% went to companies founded by women and men. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> There's a piece of the pie missing. Yeah, it is because less than 0.1% of the capital went to female founders that year. And this was also later confirmed by Sweden's biggest newspaper. You might have seen other numbers on like female founders and how much money they get, but this is in VC, so less than 0.1%. Mm. Uh-oh, back. Sometimes back. it works a little bit too well. <laughs> OK, let's summarize this to make it e even sim more simple for you. All right, to raise capital, you should either be a white male from a big city or bring one. And from our Back in Minds perspective, we can see, like, you can ask the question, what happens when everyone looks at the same company or at the same apartment, for example? it becomes very expensive. It's the same with companies, and that's why we invest beyond hypes and bubbles to find the companies and the founders that other investors miss. We do this because of return, but the side effect is driving a change, creating new role models and owners in society. It's time for a fireside chat of Firecamp Whatever chat. Ba -da -da. Yeah. yeah. So now we're like just we're like backing up here and, and sitting back here. And it feels perfectly natural. So here is the fire. Did you bring the marshmallows? No, I brought a fire. Okay. That's good enough, right? That's nice. All right. So you can, what, this, this feel, feels perfectly natural. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Actually, we, um, the slush team, they suggested like 10 different moderators to us. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we rejected them all. <laughs> I'm not sure it was a good idea now, but uh, let's try. Yeah. All right, so um, we've yeah. seen a lot of statistics. Uh, yeah. But why does it look like that? Well, I think there's different reasons to this. Um, one could be that if we look at the 100 largest VC firms, we see that only 7% of the employees are female, for example. Uh, actually, in Sweden, it's more common to be named Johan or Henrik than to be uh, a woman in VC. Mm. 
So, uh, I mean, this is a very psychological effect that we have, the similarity effect that we invest in and hang out with and recruit people that are like ourselves. Any you, one or Hendrix in the audience? I wonder what the Finnish name would be. Yeah. yeah. Another thing can be, I mean, the industry relies a lot on, uh, you know, tight networks. The deal flow is so big, so you need, like, people to point out the right companies for you. And in the end, it means that you, like, invest in your friends' friends. Um, yeah. And I mean, one of the most legendary founders of a VC company, he, he, I think his quote was, reaching me is the best qualifier. And that's like actually saying that it's much better if a founder just runs around looking for VCs rather than work with their own companies. And we believe very much in fl flipping the yeah. coin, <laughs> totally, totally reverse. Like I, in the future, we think that VCs and investors will be the one coming with the hats in the hand and asking for an investment in your companies. Because um, the thing is that there are so many more funding options for entrepreneurs. Uh, just take like crowdfunding. Last year it surpassed uh, in amount VC. Uh, and there are so many more options. So I think it's going to be like the other way around. That yeah. We uh, VCs need to go with the hat in our hands. Yeah, like, the question is like, will the founders even choose right. VC when there are many financing options? Mm, exactly, exactly. What do you think? Yeah. Um, yeah, so what should we talk about now? <laughs> yeah, like... Uh, do you think that the industry will change? I'm very sure the industry will change um, because of return, as I said earlier, and, and also because of attracting the future founders. Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. because this swap. And also when you, maybe when you like, understand the difference with, between the like, perceived risk and the actual mm. risk. When assessing founders, you yeah. mean like... Um, yeah. mm. But I mean, there are so many things going on. I mean, uh, so many things are happening and we're trying more. Like VCs are looking for female founders. Uh, you, you, know, you want to have women in a lot of panels. Mm -hmm. You want to like, uh, do pitching boot camps for women and so on. Uh, what do you think of that? I mean, there's definitely progress going on. And um, I think that all initiatives are very good. It's a good intention. But I think that we also have to ask ourselves, what, does, what is that doing with, with the founder when we talk all the time about how the founder should, should cha change? Like even putting up boot camps for them to be better pitchers. I think that's a little wrong, actually. I think yeah. that um, it would be much better if the whole investor network would go to training and maybe learn how to see beyond their own cognitive bias. Actu and actually, mm. I mean, research says that... Uh, That's actually based on that, research. Uh, it's not mm. that like uh, a woman or someone of a minority do uh, you know, a pitch that is not good enough. So it's actually mm. we that need to look beyond our like, biases. Mm. And uh, yeah, we need to change. So in maybe you're, like, a summary would be like, maybe we come from the wrong angle when we talk about what the founders need to do differently. And we should talk much more about how the investors should do things yeah. differently. Yeah. And, um, but I mean, we, we heard just before us was a woman on stage who just started a $550 million fund and yeah. uh, started a great company with social services in India. And she also said like she was so sick and tired of the fact when she's invited to a panel, like we are looking for a female founder. And that's probably something you can all relate to. Uh, How does it make you feel like you, you've been to a lot of panels and you get a lot of questions? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you go to this panel <laughs> and uh, you have so much to say. You want to tell them about how you, like the companies you've built, uh, you want to tell them about the investments you've made. And the first question you get is always, how does it feel to be a woman in a manly dominated industry? It makes one feel like this. Can you describe that? <laughs> what is it on the screen? It's actually yeah. a man in a vagina suit. But uh, <laughs> the fun thing is the that, funny uh, thing is that <laughs> when uh, we sent this through to the slush team, uh, the only like, comment that we got we was... We thought it wouldn't pass, but like, they will never let us use this picture in our exactly. PowerPoint. But the only thing they asked was, like, <laughs> can you change the background color on the slide with the guys of, in the hot dog suits? 
in the hot dog suit. <laughs> yeah, anyone up for hot dogs? I don't know. <laughs> no, but uh, there, yeah, there is so much. There is actually so much uh, more to talk about. And maybe we should all agree on the fact that, yeah. I mean, like, let's just skip the prefix of founders. Let founders be founders and not female founders or female investors or immigrant founders it, or Afro-American. The same, the same goes for, uh, you have the femtech category. Mm. I mean, in most other categories, like if it's men founders, uh, you know, uh, reaching out. To it's men, odd because it's, yeah, exactly. it's uh, if like a, if a, if a, a category for if human a man, beings. Like. If, it, if there's a product by a man for men, then it's like for human beings, right? And if there's a product by women for women, it's always femtech. So uh, yeah, so it's a lot of a lot of stuff there. Um, what's your like? Do we have some more quotes? Like these quotes are. Interesting. Yeah, that survival heard, of the like fittest the, is a good one. Yeah, survival of the fittest. Yeah. yeah, it's also from the VC industry. How does that make you feel if you don't get funding and it's now? But I think that's that's where the, the industry comes from a place where it's very very normal that the founder uses all his or her time to try to reach the VC or the investor, and it's actually uh, we very often hear from from people in our industry that uh, this founder was so driven, he, he was actually waiting outside the ladies' room when I got out. Actually, I, I, I've done that. <laughs> I've been waiting outside of the restroom and like, hello. But that's really creepy. Yeah, exactly. It, it's it it's not creepy. a driven entrepreneur. It's actually only creepy, right? <laughs> no, but uh, I think, and that's how we see like entrepreneurs. Uh, you know, they they like, no, we can't come to your networking event because we need to launch this or we need to hang out with our customers. That's mm -hmm. only a positive thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We were actually kicked out, out once yes. from a founder. Yeah. We traveled a long way and we sat at this office and all of a sudden she said, now you have to go. Yeah. There are too many customers calling at the call center. And we loved it. We, inve like, we invested. Yeah, we invested. That's a good suggestion. It. Yeah. Um, and looking at... Let's start, like fears. What's your biggest fear? Missing out of deals. FOMO. We have an album of investments that we should have done. I think all the investors have an album of investment that sh should have made. Companies that are growing much more than you thought. Yeah, and well, I think we're both like super competitive mm. uh, because we really like, we're going to do this for, you know, Maxim maximize return mm. and like, yeah, maybe have better return than everyone else. Mm. Because mm. the key is re return here. A lot of people like, are you doing this, you know, to be kind to these entrepreneurs or like some kind of charity? This is no charity. This is pure business. But uh, while doing this, we yeah create the new role models and uh, a lot of new um, yeah, new uh, outlooks mm. of the entrepreneurs. Mm. One fear could be like uh, the representation trap. Mm. Uh, when, when investing in someone that other have missed uh, and that person would actually not succeed with his or her company, it would be easy to think, okay, I was right about that group of people or entrepreneurs without background. And vice versa, if that person succeeds, it's not, then you don't talk about representation then anymore. Then it's very often, okay, that yes. was just the exception of it all. So I, I recognize that, we, that mm. very much from my upbringing with like Iranian parents. So you're like, if I do something wrong, I will destroy so much from other like immigrants with the Iranian background. And you have a lot of like weight on your shoulders. So you have to prove a lot of things. Um, but uh, yeah, but I don't think we should uh, worry about this because the companies are doing great. <laughs> so. All right, time's running out. Yeah, time's Only running out. Only 30 seconds Only, to go. Yeah, should we like yeah. do our brave heart? So this is the time for the, like, the William Wallace brave heart uh, end here of it all. Um, have we got something prepared for that? Not really. Not really, but no. let's... Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so... You could all go out 
and swim with the sharks, or you can join me and Sarah in the blue ocean to find the true future successes. I mean, in Nordics, we are among the best of the best. You are among the best of the best, but don't stop there. Go ahead and be, be Will Smith with us and find the ones that are miss. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.